In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up and program this One for All Smart Control Pro Universal Remote Control. I'm going to show you the app, how all that works, and how to transfer the data to the remote control. I'm going to show you how to set up activities, and also, right here on the box, it says it'll work with Fire Stick, Fire TV, Amazon devices, that sort of thing. I'm going to share my personal experience with that, whether it works good, whether it's a flop. All right, so stay tuned. This one is going to be action-packed all the way through. Without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so unfortunately, this remote doesn't use codes like a conventional remote. You just type in the code, and away you go. You're all set up. You have to use an app to set this up. I don't like that, but that's the way it is. So head over to your app store and download the My Nevo app. Here we are right here, My Nevo. All right, so I got the app downloaded. Now the app is going to say, is it okay to use Bluetooth? So go ahead, you have to allow that. Okay, I've got the app downloaded and I've opened it up. It's going to go through a few little checks and balances to get set up in there. If you get a box that says it needs updated, go ahead and click that, let it update. And then we're going to select, this is the Smart Control Pro, so we're going to select that. Now it wants me to press OK for three seconds. Search for remote. If you get anything that says um, it needs permission to connect to your Bluetooth, whatever, just allow it to do that. All right, so it sees the remote. Let's go over here to settings, Bluetooth, and right there at the top, OFA Smart Control Pro connected. So now you know it's working. Let's go ahead and add a TV in here. Now we have a Sony TV. All right, so now it wants me to test the code by pushing input home, the direction pad, mute, volume, whatever, stuff like that. Now, I already know that my first code doesn't work, but you want to try your first code because it might work, but mine doesn't work. So let's just say try next. See, it says, great, let's test one of five codes. There's five possibilities here. I've tested this already. It's the second code. All right, now here we are on the second code. So let's go ahead and try it. Input, D-pad, directional, power, Okay, this all works good. All right, now let's say keys work. Okay, so save that, keys work, and that just saved the code for you. All right, so now it's just telling me to press this TV right here, this activity key right here to uh, control the TV. Now we want to add a couple more devices here so I can show you how the activities work. So let's say add more devices. All right, so let's go to a, uh, a Roku. Now this won't work with a Roku stick, you know, one of the 4K sticks that goes behind the TV. Those won't work with this, unfortunately. The Roku works with a set-top box. That part is fine. Now it's got a Fire TV listed here, but I'm going to get to that here in a little while. Uh, streaming device, okay, Roku. All right, so the same thing. It wants me to test home, direction pad, play. Um, I already know this works, so we're going to try it. Keys work. All right, one more device. Let's add an audio device. Now you can add a sound bar or an amplifier. That's kind of nice that it gives you two options here. We're going to be adding an amplifier. So add more devices. And here's our sound bar, a set top box, audio device. We have a Pioneer. Now if your uh, brand isn't listed here, you can go to the end where it says search, but mine is listed, Pioneer. And we already know the first code doesn't work, so let's go ahead and say try next. All right, so we're going to try to test the volume up and down. And as you can see here, mute, it's working just like it's supposed to. Keys work. All right, so we've got all three of those set up. Now let me show you how the activities work. All right, so these activities kind of work like macros where you can push one button to get your TV to come on, get your amplifier to come on. You can even select which input you want your streaming device tied to. Pretty neat. And they kind of program themselves in there. Once you start adding in devices, it just creates the activities for you. So that's pretty neat that you don't have to go through a process of figuring out how do I get these things in here. All right, so we're in the home screen of the Nevo app right here. So we have to scroll over to activities. It doesn't really let you make a lot of changes to the activities, to be honest with you. But it does give you a little bit here. So you can say watch movie. That's just the one example I'm going to use. We have three possibilities here. 
All right, so pressing the watch movie currently controls your TV, your Roku, and your Pioneer audio device. Well, that's the way I would want to put it anyway. So we'll say replace activity if I want to make little changes to it, but we're going to keep activity as is, okay? Now to assign an HDMI input to your streaming device, all you have to do is say view devices, scroll over here to your Roku. You can see it's currently set to HDMI 4. If I wanted to change that, I would say assign to HDMI and you can select whichever input that you have yours hooked to. All right, so to get that to work, that was the watch movie activity. That's this middle button here. So all you would do is push the middle button right here and that'll turn on my TV and my amplifier. It doesn't really turn on the Roku, even though it should, but to get the Roku to come on, I found that all I have to do is kind of bump these arrow keys up and down and that makes the Roku come on. So now I can control the volume to the amplifier without switching any devices. I can control the direction arrows and that scrolls the Roku around, so like this. And then anything for the TV is like input and stuff like that. Now if you want to turn everything off, just hit power and that'll send out the codes to turn everything off. So pretty cool. All right, so let's talk about the fire stick problem. Yeah, there's a problem. At least for me there was. Now, this is my personal experience. This doesn't mean that it's not going to work for you, but it didn't work very well for me. I got good news and I got bad news. The good news is if you have a Fire TV that's an actual physical TV, it does work for that. All you have to do is come over here to My Devices. Now, we're going to remove our Sony TV. And if you want to remove all your devices, just scroll over here to the right. And there's a thing here that says remove all devices. So just so you know, uh, yeah, I do want to remove my Sony TV. So click replace device. Now the good thing about the Fire TV is you can program it like another, just any other TV. You don't program it like you do with the Fire Stick. I'm getting to that here in a minute. Um, now that's not going to be on our list here. So what we want to do is um, search, enter the brand name Amazon, done. That's my brand. Is your TV's brand Amazon? Yes. There's only one code set, so it ha if it doesn't work, it's not going to work. So let's go ahead and test it. We got input, we got uh, the pad, home, mute. And as you can see, everything's working, so keys work. Now as far as the fire stick itself, the one that goes behind the TV, I didn't have any luck getting that to work. There's a procedure in the manual that shows you how to add a Bluetooth remote as if it was an Amazon remote, you know, the little remote that comes with the Fire Stick. You're trying to trick the, Am the Fire Stick into thinking that this um, One For All remote is that remote. I couldn't get it to work. It would not recognize the remote. I even reached out to One For All, and they did respond. I'll give them credit for that. And they gave me a couple of ideas to try. Nothing. Did not work. I tried it on three different fire sticks that I have. Nothing. It did not work. And it wasn't a generation one. I think there's a note in here that says it won't work with those. It was a newer fire stick. It didn't work. Now there is a procedure that you're not going to find in the manual for learning. That's where you take the two remotes, your original remote and the one for all remote, and you can teach the one for all remote any commands that might be missing that you still need. I don't know why they didn't put it in the manual, but all you have to do is come over to the app and scroll over to help. Of course, they don't make it real visible to find it here. And then once you click help, it's right here, learn new keys. So the whole procedure is right here. I'm not going to go through it. It's pretty self-explanatory right here. And there's a little hole right here for a microphone. It does have a voice activation right here, but I believe it only works on the Google TV. All right, so these little uh, controls right here are your smart TV uh, shortcut uh, buttons. I did test it on my Fire TV, but they didn't really work very well. I think one of them worked right, and then the other ones, they didn't go to Prime or YouTube or whatever. You may have a different brand, and they may work for you. And last but not least, if you feel like everything is just all messed up and you want to start from scratch again, go ahead and push back and exit, and then push 981. That resets it back to factory settings. Go into your uh, app, and then just do like I showed you earlier and remove all devices, and then you'll start from scratch. All right, so I hope this video has been helpful. 
Thanks for watching.